All right, today we start working on our upper play field. Welcome everybody, Steve from the Pinball Room. Um, still figuring this one out very much as we go. I have not got this one really figured out in my mind, so it's gonna be a lot of editing, I think, on this video until we get to a good spot, so bear with me. But we've got two of these longer bat, flipper bats, longer arm here. The green tape is what I've gone through and checked. Um, that's how much we need to be below the play field to have proper interaction with the flipper mech, which leaves us with about three, three and a half inches that we can play around with there above the play field, which I did measure this part out before. That equals the height of our staircase back here. Okay, so that's gonna work good for us. But we've got a couple of things we're trying to, to work into here. Um, I wanna have drop targets here at the back of the upper play field. And what I really like to have are these smart drop targets, smart. So it's got two coils, all right? It's got the main one here, like every drop target does, to reset it, pull it up. But then it's got this much smaller coil here, which is just used as a magnet for this little plate here. When it gets it, it gets energized, it pulls this one into itself, okay? And then this little brass armature in here, if you can see, goes back, boop, and goes underneath, and it basically it, it's knocking the drop target down for us. So this one you can control when it's up and down, and you can make it go up and down, up and down. And the idea I had, and we might have to drop it, I don't know if it's gonna fit, I was hoping to have four of these, have each one of these be a symbol for each member of the Led Zeppelin band, right? Each other unique symbols. We'd have them up here with a nice little sticker on it, right? And that these would, anyway, the mode would be kind of like a miniature whack-a-mole uh, mode is what I was thinking when you got up there, where these are, you know, kind of one's going up, one's going down, and you have to hit it before it goes down. You have to try to time it and hit the right targets before it goes down. If you don't, if you miss, these are going to be in the back. And my thought is, if you miss, then it goes behind into kind of like a trough back here that the balls get collected and come down over here to, the, to this left orbit. So the idea would be you're trying to keep the ball up in the upper play field and hit as many of these targets as you can. But, okay, so that's an idea. It may or may not be fun. And there's other things we could do beyond just the whack-a-mole mode, right? But that's kind of one of the core modes I was thinking about doing. Um, but this extra coil obviously makes the mech way wider than a normal pop bumper mech. This one's got the sticker coming off. That's embarrassing. Keep your clothes on. All right. So a normal mech is just as one coil, and so it's a little bit thinner, right? And you can stack them real close to each other. This one, when you get another one next to it, you got to have room for all that, and so it makes a, a big gap between the drop targets. <laughs> There's enough of a gap just normally with these, right? And so either we need to re-engineer how this coil is set up, and instead of being set up in front, if we can somehow set it up like behind it or something else or in front of it, and still do a similar thing. Um, so we might have to go through and like re-engineer this part and get this coil bracket like in front, underneath the play field, with a longer arm that's pushing back so they can be closer together. Or I don't know, we'll have to figure that part out. So as we take a closer look here, what we have, okay, so here's how much the flipper bat can come up. Um, the other thing, probably the very first thing we need to figure out before we think about modes or other targets or things like that is just, you know, the ball's marching up the path here, right? And as it comes up, um, when it reaches the top, like, how do we get the ball off, right? Now we're at the very, very top step. We've got all one, two, three, four, five balls in here locked and ready to go. We're ready to start a multi-ball. We're going to start this escalator conveyor belt to dump the ball, but what's it going to dump on? How exactly is it going to dump? If you go too slow, the ball will even just stay on because of the magnet, right? But it's not a super strong connection. And so my hope, or my plan, my thought here, is that we just have something on the back that's like scraping it off. And as it comes over, the ball is just kind of like scratched off. And then we'll come onto the play field. Okay, but so things we need to understand here, right? Just how much depth do we have? From the back wall of the play field is right about five and a half inches to the edge of the steps to the back edge of the steps here. From the very back to here is five and a half inches. And probably need about use about a half inch of that clearance beyond this for the steps to be able to kind of curl past. So we've got about five inches deep for a play field. Now width, width, we can put the bats like on either side of this horseshoe. Okay, is where those can come in. And so we're looking the three there for, you know, 
right around seven inches minimum width. I think we might even be able to go as wide as maybe nine inches or so. I don't know. Between nine and ten inches wide. Let's see what that gets us here. So it could be something about that size. So my thought is we do it angled like this, and the flipper bats would be about down here, but we still have a gap. There. That's the width of the top of the stairs. Okay. We have a flipper bat here. Okay, we've got this much. We still have a gap right about between here, right? Of where the ball could come down, kind of like a flipper gap, right? Like at the bottom of your play field. So if you're hitting around, the ball can come in between those and you can still not save the ball. I'm also thinking that we have no rails on the side of the play field whatsoever. So the ball ricochets off on any one of these sides is going to spill down onto the play field. So I want to make it I want to make it difficult for the ball to stay up there, right? I want to make it super easy for the ball to stay up there. I don't want you up there for very long. It's not a big play field. There's not a whole lot to do. I don't want you to be stuck up there so long that like, oh, this stupid play field, upper play field now is just slowing down the whole entire game. So I feel if we do something like this, that will give us enough, you know, with these full-size bats of a chance to be able to hit the ball and do something cool with it, but then plenty of opportunities still to, to, to lose the ball, so it makes it hard. You're not going to be staying up there forever. All right, now we'll need to get this cut out in wood because the cardboard is too flimsy. The, main, the primary thing we need to test is making sure that when the ball is up here at the top of the stairs and we start like a multi-ball as it comes over, that this piece of wood will like be able to like scrape the ball off. <laughs> pull it off right yep so that's the main thing we need to do get a piece of wood cut to about these dimensions get it mounted in here somehow like with some posts that holds in place and we'll have to kind of be testing testing exactly how far forward and back whatever it needs to go to scrape the wood off consistently and I don't think just a flat piece of wood is going to do it I think we're going to need to have a little bit of a shape here maybe almost kind of like in a little bit of like a semicircle that's kind of like raised up that might need to be a 3d print 3d printed part that fits on top of that so the ball comes over, gets scraped off, and then is forced to kind of roll to one side or the other. I get to have a chance to get it out over to a flipper. And that's where this flipper gap might not work because the ball always just goes down the side of the flipper gap here. We might have to close that in better and make it to where, you know, it brings it over to a flipper. All right, so you have a chance to hit it as that mode starts. So this is going to, have to be like a... 3D printed piece that will slide on slide on the end of this will connect on to that piece of wood. And eventually I want to make this out of um, clear acrylic and have it laser etched probably with like the Icarus symbol and then have LEDs shining through on the side to make it illuminate and be able to color match the rest of the play field for the light shows. So I think that'll look pretty, pretty sick. This is what I was worried about. This hole over here is inside this area outside of the orbit. It's going to be fine. It's not going to get in the way of the ball or ball paths or anything like that, right? This will be right, right behind where we're going to trap the ball over here. So it works just perfectly. But the corresponding hole over here on this side is going to be right about where I think about putting that pop bumper. <laughs> so, yeah, it's one reason I didn't put the pop bumper in quite yet, because I don't know if we're really going to be able to have room for it. We'll have to see exactly where this flipper bat ends up, and we might or might, may or may not be able to do our whole idea with the, uh, with the pop bumper and the stand-up targets back here. This was just a piece of scrap from one of my old um, white wood scraps, so the CNC had all been cutting through it, but there you go. That's the shape we need. Let's go down and uh, got to figure out how to fasten this into place now.
This is actually just a tiny bit lower than the height of this. Um, but I think that's going to be good because we know as this kind of comes around, that's about where I'm going to be able to have to put it. Um, we'll need, the ball is going to have to like lower down a little bit. It's just, it's just staying there. Definitely need a little 3D printed piece that will go around that. All right, so it's been a few days. Um, we were working with our stepper motors and that didn't work out too great. But while we wait for our DC motors to show up, I want to get back to, to playing around with this some more. So um, this piece of wood um, is a good, it's a good prototype, I guess, um, early rough version of what we want our play field to, um, to be like. But when the ball comes around, playing with that um, staircase, just on the flat piece of wood, there's not enough to actually make the ball come off. It just kind of slides and stays there by the magnet till the next magnet comes around. It just, it just stays here kind of rolling on this piece of the wood. So we need something that has a little bit more of an angle to help kind of scrape the ball off. So I went through and I 3D printed something out in Fusion 360 really fast. It's just this little like rectangular piece of plastic but it's got this uh, edge to it, and it just, it'll just slide right onto the board there, okay? And now we've got kind of the scraper, and it's got a bit of a lip. I wanna to try to, but see, it's got a bit of a lip there to help kind of, hopefully kind of scrape the ball off. The first attempt of what hopefully will end up working to get the ball scraped off. We also need to just figure out, and we are talking about those drop targets and the stand-up targets, how to make those fit on here. Okay, so primary thing I've been struggling with is trying to figure out how can I get these four drop targets as close together as possible. In an ideal world, I would have a single mech similar to that set of um, stand-up targets or drop targets I have already in my play field, but they could each be individually controlled up and down. And I haven't been able to find one like that that I can buy aftermarket. And I don't have quite the ability and the knowledge um, to go through and like, build my own from scratch. And so what I do have are these individually smart, resettable drop targets you can get off Pinball Life. But they have this fat coil off to the side like I talked about earlier, right? And even if I could go through and say they have a right and a left orientation for that magnet. So even if I did something like this, to get those two as close together as I, as I, as I could, well, it's still there's still a pretty good gap there between them, right? And because they have these fat brackets here at the top for mounting it also, Right? You can only get those, those metal brackets a certain amount together, right? So no matter what, I'm gonna have a gap that's almost the space of a ball. And really, if I'm not staggering them forward and back because of the switches down here also, they're gonna be even a little bit further apart. And so we're talking like that much space. And so if I put that down here and I measure that gap, we're talking like 43, 44 millimeters, okay? Stand-up target going between is 25 millimeters, okay? That's why there's room for a stand-up target is what I'm thinking. But then it's not just a matter of fitting the stand-up target, you know, between those drop targets. Again, there is a, a mounting bracket for the stand-ups as well. And that little guy there is 20 millimeters. And so I've got the metal, the fat metal that goes between these drop targets plus another 20 millimeters to be able to try to squeeze in a stand-up target in between there. I can't even hold this all together, but you get the idea. So the way I went about it here, I started laying these just down here on this board, and the weight of these held them in place luckily. And so I said, all right, how many of these can I squeeze in? And at first it wasn't very many. And then all of a sudden I had a, a revelation. Even if I can't move this whole coil mech portion, you know, over around the back, I can take this coil though and rotate it so these leads are coming up instead of sticking out to the side. And that'll buy me another, that buys me almost another 20 millimeters right there. So if I go through and do that, now I can get these a little bit closer together. Okay, and I'm trying to fit them down here on this board to see, you know, will they really actually fit. Okay, and they do. Now my board is 10 inches across. It's a little bit skinny. The metal's kind of hanging off on the edge. You can't quite see, but I'm not quite there. And then if I want to try to squeeze in um, a stand-up in between them, 
well that's going to take a little more space also. <laughs> so if we pretend here these are the coils and we've got these coils turned a little bit right so we can get those tighter together. The tightest that we can get these is right about there. Okay just where these pieces of metal just aren't quite touching right we need a little bit of leeway there. Okay and that leaves us just enough space for this target with this base to come in and slide right between them. You can't probably quite see it from that angle, but there's just enough space for it to go in there. Okay? So with that being the case, it means we're going to have this yellow target. You know, the back of it is going to be like right about there. Which is a pretty decent amount of space. It's not, it's not too huge. The ball is definitely not going to slip between. Um, so I think that's going to work. So we don't have to move this coil bracket around because the rest of the, of the mechanism isn't going to give us any more space anyway if we do move it. So we just switch the angle of those coil leads vertically so they don't stick out to the side so much. We have just enough room to shove in a stand-up target in between them. Okay, So I think that's going to work for us. Now, going through and measuring out exactly how many we can fit here on this, I did that and it's not as many as I would like. <laughs> if I turn around the other direction. It still ends up being kind of tight on this 10 inch piece of wood. It doesn't quite fit. This one's right to the edge. That one has just the space it needs. So it needs a tiny bit more space. We're off by a little bit here, okay? By about another half inch or so. So instead of a an, instead of a 10 inch piece of wood going across here, I think we were able to go through and make it 11 inches, okay? We'll have just enough space to fit in all the mechs and everything underneath it, okay? And the one concern will be about this coil hanging off to the side here, and so. We might just need to go a full 12 inches. 11 inches, okay. And if you remember, we've got we've got this guy, our diverter ramp, okay. That's got to fit back here also. All right, we've got our upper play field. We're gonna see if we can put it in. Now I just need some way to like, I'm gonna have to screw it in, this is so heavy. <laughs> so many mechs in the back here. One there. Yep, and then we just got to get the flipper mix underneath. All right, so this is our upper play field pretty much. It's in there, it's got the right height. The thing I need to do now is to go through and figure out where exactly I can place um, some support columns to be able to hold this up in place, where I have these, these two pieces of wood. Now, this one's actually kind of out of the way of the ball guides, but this guy's right through the middle of an orbit over here. So I can't put them exactly where those pieces of wood are right now. But, and I can't put one here. I can do a couple of support pieces here. 
one and a nub here up front will go down behind where the ball gets locked. And this one over here by the post, I've got room for one and back further back. So I'll have to figure that out a little bit. One, two, three, four, four columns should be enough probably. All right, and now I know pretty much where my flipper mechs need to be underneath the play field so I can go through and get those installed in place. And really don't think I'm gonna have room for a pop bump over here like we talked about. The flipper mech's gonna take up a lot of that space because I've got other things going on up here um, with that other diverter mech. So yeah, but uh, that's, uh, that's basically the way that it's gonna work. Okay, you'll have the ball come here up off the top of the stairs and then it'll get deposited onto here roll to one side or the other and then you'll start hitting these drop targets down maybe hit the stand-up targets when you need to and then if you miss and go right behind go through one it'll go down behind and be brought back down to the play field all right pretty early dirty ugly prototype of this but i'll go through and get this anchored in place figure it out with the rest of the ball guys we have under, underneath there i'll get those ball guys back in place and we'll get some some supporting rods to hold that up yeah.